Living Waters presents On the Box. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to another edition of On the Box. There we are. Have you ever had one of those days, folks? Have you ever had one of those days? Well, we're not having one of those days here. Every day is we're one having of, a good day. Every day is one of those days. Every day is days. one of those. Mm -hmm. In fact, every day is this day. Mm -hmm. Because tomorrow is this day tomorrow. And every Tomorrow's minute of every day, every, every minute of every day, the sun is rising and setting somewhere on the earth. That's right. Isn't it amazing? But it's actually the earth that's rotating. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm moving through space. It's Friday. Are you excited about Transform tomorrow? <laughs> yes, very excited. Why? Because <laughs> it's our twenty first, twenty second Transform. I don't Something know which one like it is. That, yeah. But it's exciting to get together and uh, especially people who are like minded. That's yeah. it's a, it's a it's spirit. Like a family uh, reunion. Yeah, it's even better. Well, a family reunion you want to go to. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just gonna say <laughs> this is gonna get me in trouble with relatives, but it is. It's it's very exciting to get together with the saints and uh, talk about things that matter. Yeah. Uh, we're going to Oceanside, California, Calvary Chapel, Oceanside. We'll be there tomorrow morning. The conference is from 8.30 to 12.30. You can still register, and you better, at livingwaters.com. <laughs> livingwaters.com. Just click on the transformed icon. You'll see three transformed conferences there. You want to click on the Oceanside conference for tomorrow's conference. And we are going to go down to uh, San Diego and hang out with Batman and Robin and... Uh, um, Mickey and, and the Pillsbury Doughboy monster, I guess, and, and Goofy, uh, Goofy and, and, <laughs> and uh, old and men I, dressed like Nacho Libre when they I, shouldn't. There'll be some demonic stuff there for sure. Well, yes. And we'll get hecklers, no problem, yes. no problem, because people in anonymity will be bold. And we're not going down there for autographs. We're not going down there to get our comic book collections priced. We're going down there to preach the gospel. Amen. And a bunch of people are coming down with us. It's going to be a great day as soon as we find parking. <laughs> so if you live in San Diego, come and join us. Yeah, or well, anywhere in Southern just California. Gonna say, if you live anywhere in America, come and join That's us. That's right. If you're in Florida and you got nothing to do tomorrow, <laughs> come on out to San Diego and open air preach with us tomorrow afternoon after you attend the Transformed mm -hmm. Conference. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So what are you working on today? Uh, my mustache here. Your mustache? I've got a rebellious mustache here and it's annoying me. Right now? You, you get them too, don't you? Oh, I guess. It's one that they're, just they're goes... like they have the life of their own. It's like... Uh, yeah. And... and, and uh, Touches, you know. I've had it while I'm preaching, and it's our, just almost demonic. Our really. special guest, who we're not going to introduce yet, but our special guest doesn't get them. does not have any problems <laughs> with demonic mustache hairs. In fact, we're going to have our first lady ever in the foxhole. Now, uh, what do you think about women in combat? I think it's great. Anyone else other than me is great. So. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, push that's going to get front some miles. <laughs> hey, uh, registration is also open for our Deeper Conference at deeperconference.com. Uh, this year we're going to be in Southern California in Westlake Village at Calvary Community Church. We've got Alistair Begg and Frank Pastore and Mike Fabaris and uh, got it. Did you get it? I got yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> we can move on. Yes. Yeah. Another thing about our special guest. Mm -hmm. More hair on the top of her head than me. <laughs> really? A lot more. <laughs> you know, when it gets hot like this, yeah. real hot like this, it's, it's, it's like my hair just is flat. Is it? Yes, I don't. Because it, it's I, one of those yeah. days where you can't do anything yeah. with your hair. We have another lady on the show today. Uh -huh. Behind the scenes, my lovely wife Maria is in the chat room. She is the Supreme Allied Commander today of the chat room. She is the moderator. Don't even think about messing with her because mm -hmm. she has been ordered to give you all the boot if you don't play fair in the chat room. And if you think... And if you think Maria won't do it, huh? <laughs> <laughs> if you think Tony's tough, he's nothing. That's right. Yeah, but Maria's a lot prettier than me, and she too has more hair on her head than I do. So if we covered all the hair, I, no, I think it's a wise, wise for me not to make comments. <laughs> you make comments like that, I'll just sit quiet. Yeah, we're just gonna move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. Hey, this week's giveaways. Uh, last uh, opportunity. Uh, get it? Got it? <laughs> Man, we got a war going on today. Uh, first prize: hardcover edition of the New Evidence Bible. Uh, second prize will be the Blue Book on Evangelism, written by Ray. And third prize will be five pack of the Celebrity Youth, Teen, or Young Person Million Dollar Bills. Just say, I want all the funny looking young kids on the millions. Yeah. Greg Alsace and I were in, or me were in uh, Home Depot yesterday purchasing something. And, uh, you like Greg around tools? <laughs> yeah, I'd run out of uh, trillion dollar bills. Uh -huh. And so he lent me some uh, of those celebrity, yeah. whatever they are. <laughs> and <laughs> the youth. Celebrity thing, right. and they were going so well. Really, I mean, I didn't get one rejection. Some people say, well, "This is neat. Thank you so much. It was great." It's hard to believe, though, that uh, there's a lot of people shopping in Home Depot that watch High School Musical. 
it was the staff. Seem, it was the staff. Mm, a lot of That's the staff, the and they had a lot of staff there, really? the young people. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right, we want to get right to it. We do have a special guest on the on the uh, program today. Uh, many of you know her as Fish with Trish. We know her as Trish with Trish. Trish with Fish. <laughs> or Trish with Emilio, actually, is how we know her. Uh, Trish Ramos is on the program today. Hi, Trish! Hi, you guys. Whoa. Thank you for having me on. What a blessing. Yeah. <laughs> and yes, I do have a lot of hair on my head, and That's I'm right. glad and I don't have it on my face. And a, and a perfectly clean face. <laughs> who has no tomatic mustache hairs. <laughs> this is such a bad show today. <laughs> so, Trace, I want to start by, um, you know, a lot of our viewers obviously know you. If anyone's familiar with uh, Living Waters and the Way of the Master, they, uh, they know you well, especially if they've been watching uh, season four of the Way of the Master television program. Oh, yes. You were an important part of the team to Europe. But how did you first come in contact with uh, Ray and his mustache and Living Waters? Yeah, that, that's a, it's an interesting story. Easy, um, who I'm sure some of uh, you guys that are watching are familiar with, um, emails Wayne. He was my pastor for many years at, um, at my old church, Calvary Chapel Saving Grace, and he would come up to me um, every, you know, every other week or something, my, my, myself and my husband, he'd say, you, you know, come work for the ministry. You could open air preach with Ray every single morning with Ray and myself. And I just thought, wow, that would be great. You know, evangelize and kick off your day, um, very first thing. And so that kind of stuck in my heart. And though I know Easy probably was telling that to all sorts of people at the ministry that, that had a love for the lost, it really, um, really just impacted me. And through a series of events, um, I, I stepped away from teaching and um, came and worked for the ministry by faith and drove all the way from Riverside to Bellflower on the dreaded 91 freeway. I think it was like a, I don't know, it could could be up to a three hour drive. It was a long drive, Long yeah. drive, and, um, but it was the best thing I did and never went back to teaching, that and uh, that was in 2005, yeah. Okay, and what grade level did you teach prior to? Um, well, I was doing long term subbing, and subbing, I never had like my own class. Okay. Um, and I think that was by the Lord's Lord's hand, because I interviewed, and and uh, I, I'd have like, I don't know, two or three different interviews with panels of people. They, they just didn't like me, never hired me. And, uh, and I'm glad because if I would have been, you know, went under contract, I would have probably never got to work for the ministry. So God just kept shutting the doors for teaching. Their loss, our gain, huh, Ray? Yeah, absolutely. So, so how, do you remember when you met Trish? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> actually, Ray, Ray, I should have known actually, not to ask that question. Why did Ray, I do that? you probably don't remember this, but but um, many years ago, I was helping Easy and his wife. Well, you know, Ray, Rachel. Your daughter. Um, your daughter. I remember her. Uh, <laughs> I your remember daughter, Rachel. Her. I was helping them move. I didn't even know them really well, but it was put on my heart, you know, just to help them move. You were there, Ray, and um, and uh, and Emilio, my husband, was there, and you said something to him. This was years before we, we'd be married. You go, mm, Emilia, was that your wife? And he goes, hmm? He barely even knew me. And about six years later, we were to be married. Wow. I'm not ready for you to meet my daughters yet, <laughs> I don't think. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, you met all my daughters. But Trish started coming with us to Third Street Promenade. Is that right, Trish? Yeah, team? yeah, that's right. And about, uh, I think it was 1999. Was it you that didn't like it at first? Oh, Ray, your mustache and your little, your little accent. I was so upset with you. I <laughs> thought, who is that little man with the mustache telling people they're going to hell? And I just thought, no, he needs to be telling people that God has a wonderful plan for their life. Wow. Come to Christ. You know, I, I mean, I, I was so upset on the way home. I had a car full of, of, of youth, youth with me um, in other college people my age. And, and I just told them, I will find that ministry and I will email them and tell them they're doing it wrong. In my mind, I, I thought you should have been acting out skits or something and, uh, you know, telling people, oh, Jesus loves you. And uh, How long ago was that? Probably about 1999, around there, maybe 2000. Wow. okay. And, um, and then it wasn't until someone gave me Hell's Best Kept Secret that it all changed. It just began to click, and then I, you know, became one of the, the greatest supporters and was out there every Friday, Friday night. Now, to, to get the... The uh, timeline, right? Was this uh, before or after you started attending Easy's Church? Uh, this when was you first yeah, saw no, this was actually before. before this was that. before oh, okay. I ever attended uh, Calvary Chapel Saving Saving Grace. Yeah, oh, okay. that someone had told me that there were these on fire <laughs> young people out evangelizing at Third Street Promenade, and I had already had a, a heart for the lost, but I was rolling down my window and and yelling out, "Jesus loves you!" That was my evangelism. That was kind of the extent of my my evangelism, and I knew it wasn't really effective when people would look and go, "Huh?" You know, they look at me. What do you? Um, 
But um, yeah, so Hell's Best Kept Secret, that, that changed, my, changed my life in true and false conversion as well. So it was listening to those messages uh, that uh, changed your mind. How long was that after you saw the crazy guy on the box preaching? I'd say probably about a year, about a oh. year after that. And I listened to So you to were that. mad for a year. Oh, yeah, about a yes, and I never followed through, and I never, <laughs> I never sent you that email. Um, Plenty of people yeah, do. But, yeah, I'd say for about a year, and I had an old ring, you know, the boom boxes. I, I just played that tape. I had a little tape, Yeah, if some of you remember those, you know, those tapes. I played that thing, and I turned it up, and I'd sit cross-legged in my bedroom and just listen to Hell's Best Kept Secret over and over, and it just, it just pricked me, and I knew that I was wrong. And at that time, I was not in a sound church. I wasn't in a church that was teaching, um, you know, solid doctrine at all, or even how to win the loss biblically. So I just wasn't equipped. I was saved, um, but I wasn't equipped. And that's why it's so important to be in a good local church that is teaching, you know, biblical evangelism, as well as, you know, solid doctrine and, and things like that. Well, speaking of good local churches teaching solid doctrine, tell us about uh, uh, your church, the church uh, Emilio Pastors. Yeah, well, well, um, and I had only, you know, you guys, you guys remember this, but I'd only worked for the ministry for, I'd been on staff for maybe about a year and a half, and um, through a series of events, my husband had this crazy idea to move to Keller, Texas, and um, of course, I thought he was hearing the devil, mm-hmm. and uh, I thought, I'm not, I am <laughs> not going, to, what could be in that place? You know, I want to be somewhere where there's a lot of people, like LA, you know, Orange County, there's tons of people, great, the harvest is, is, is plentiful, but um through a series of events, God changed my heart. I ended up leaving the ministry. We went to Texas by faith, um, and Emilio had no idea why we were going. He, he just said, I just feel that God is leading us there, and you know how the Lord leads. It's, I didn't hear any voice from the clouds. It's just a prompting, mm-hmm. and uh, we went, and I got excited about it, and, and um, a year later, Sovereign Joy Community Church was planted. So what's evangelism like at uh, your church? Oh, inc- incredible, you guys. Um, the Lord has raised up several, several really neat open-air preachers. And in fact, um, we've had, had uh, Mike Stockwell come through, mm-hmm. you know, traveling evangelists. Um, we've, we've partnered with guys like Tim Crawford um, and John Speed from, you know, Lost Cause Ministries. And, and um, neat, neat guys that the Lord has raised up to open-air. And we go to downtown uh, Fort Worth. And what's funny is when I first heard Ray, it was on 3rd Street Promenade. And now we're preaching every Saturday on Third Street in Fort Worth, ah. which is really, which is really, really neat. So I love how the Lord does that. So tell us about your website. Oh, um, and those bags. And oh, oh okay. Yeah, there. I'll show you guys what I made. Um, fishwithtrish.com. Fishwithtrish.com is the website. Look at this for all the ladies. Sorry, guys. Um, this is a bag that um, I had a friend made. I attempted. It looks I, like a can you see it? Does it look, does like, it look yeah. like a kilt it or something? It looks like a kilt with the, <laughs> with the bottom so Well, then that'd be perfect for guys. No, I'm kidding. No, no guys. Sorry. Uh, but there's cute little buttons, but you got to see what's on the inside. Speaking of the, um, what are these tracks again, you guys? You talked about oh, them a little yeah. bit earlier. The, um, the, cel- oh, the rays. Oh, these are, these are celebrity. Yeah, the, the grown-up celebrity. Moments. And on the back, we put our church, and, and I put my website so that everyone can find us, because that's important, you know, with the Great Commission. We're not just to go, but also to make disciples. So we want to, yeah. you know, put lead people to sovereign joy and to, to a good solid church. And on the inside it says, go serve your king. So I, if you, those of you that are watching and you know Todd Friel, I stole Who's Todd his. Friel? Uh, <laughs> tall Todd Friel, who will be at the um, conference tomorrow. tomorrow. That's, That's right. right. You'll be the tall one. That's right. So if you're in that area, if you're in the Oceanside area, come out. It's going to be a great event. But go serve your king on the inside. Let me show you this one, you guys. This is my favorite. I don't think I'm going to give this one away on my blog because it's too cute. Look at this. Go serve your king on the hand, on the, on the little um, shoulder. And I don't have this one stocked with track shit because I just brought it to show you guys. But inside is a whole bunch of pockets. It's so important to have a good handy bag for us ladies because if you don't have a track ready, you're probably not going to pass them out. At least yeah. that's what I found. Do you know if I'd have been there <coughs> at the beginning, I would have made man with a uh, kangaroo pouch for tracks. <laughs> <laughs> this is before the fall. Oh, you before the fall. Before the fall. Before, before the fall, <laughs> yeah. men would have pouches. pouches. Men would be marsupials. Well, you, you know what the atheists are going to do with this one? I don't know. <laughs> Tony and Ray, I've got to tell you about this shirt. Can you see my Living Water shirt? You know what? Yes. I can. I was on, just was on the airplane from DFW to LAX this morning. I left at 7 a.m. And I can't tell you how many conversations just this t- just wearing this shirt started. Really? 
-hmm. yes. One lady goes, what is that? You know, what, Living Waters, is that a ministry? I go, actually, it is. Look at here. And I gave her a gospel track. I showed her and her, her daughter um, the uh, billions, Spurgeon billions, which uh -huh. I don't think you care anymore. I sold them. Sold, I bought all of them, I think. But <laughs> anyway, <laughs> I gave them those. And then another lady right at the counter that was checking out my, you know, the ticket. Uh -huh. She goes, oh, she goes, I go, here, thanks a billion. Thanks so much. And um and she goes, oh, wh well, what, do you, what is your shirt? What do you work for? And I said, oh, I'm ministry with Ray Comfort and Kirk Cameron. She goes, Kirk Cameron? <laughs> and um, then that led into to a little bit more. And then a guy on the plane named Michael I got to witness to as well, which was really neat. So I think I'm going to wear this every day. Every day. <coughs> Boy, we should make shirts available through the ministry. Oh, you know what? You said that because Ron's not in the office today. He's away. He? He's away. Yeah, he's and while <laughs> the grown-up's away, <laughs> the, the you cats, shall play. The cats That's play. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Um, Trish, what's the most common question you get from ladies uh, on your blog regarding evangelism? Well, boy, that's a good question. I, I'd say the number one question that I get, period, maybe not, not regarding evangelism, but it is sort of tied into evangelism, is how to find a good church. Ah. How do I find a good church? I get that question all what the is, time. What do they mean by a good church? Um, <laughs> biblical, solid, you know, verse by verse, wh where people are evangelizing and sharing their faith. Um, th I mean, that's so important. So there's a, a link on my website, fishwithtrish.com forward slash, I think it's FAQ, frequently asked questions. That's the number one question. And there's, there's all si sorts of really neat church finders where you could find a good, sure. hopefully yeah. a biblical church. But I guess I'd say the other question would be um, fear. You know, um, how do you overcome the fear? You seem so bold. You know, and I tell them, don't be deceived. I'm really not. My knees are knocking. <laughs> Every time I go to pass out a track, I, I'm, I'm not. But with practice, it does get easier. Yeah. And, you know, I really just steal the line from Ray. Or, you know, Ray, Ray you say, um, you basically just say, swallow your fears. Let your compassion for the lost move you to action. Mm -hmm. Right? Something, like Something that. to that effect, I, I right? Yeah. Just swallow them and let that, and, you know, let, let your compassion for them. I mean, if you saw that a house was burning down, you would, you would do whatever you could to, to knock on the door. In fact, the other night, my husband and I were riding bikes at midnight. Yes, I know. <laughs> Weird. At midnight. We're, we're the midnight well, watch. Well, that's because the temperature is down to 95 at midnight. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> about 100. Yeah. I know. It's hot. So we were riding our bikes, and we went a different route than we normally go. And um, we, we saw smoke and smelled, uh, smelled a smell that was, you know, fire. The house was on fire. Emilio dropped off, ju you know, jumped off his bike, began banging on the door at midnight on this person's house. A lady came <coughs> out, and we didn't know. We thought the house might have been on fire, but it was actually just a, a little, um, the bushes right by the house, which uh, could have, which could have, sure. you know, taken taken the roof and everything rather quickly, um, but that's what we do as with the lost, um, because we don't know we don't know when they're going to die. We don't know how much time they have, and that's why, that's why you know I love I love what you do, Ray. I love I love just your urgency um, because we can never take for granted. We don't know whose day, you know, we don't know when the, when their life is going to end. It could be today. Yeah. Right. <coughs> that brought back some memories when uh, Sue and I were first married. We had a a water thing that overflowed from our hot water cylinder and on a frosty morning there was so much steam coming from our roof at f uh, 5 a.m. someone called the fire department and they all came out and noticed it was just steam and turned around and went back to bed. <laughs> uh, yeah, I bet they were happy with you. Firefighters don't like being waking up at no, in the middle of the night. Especially not for steam. Not for steam. Not for no. steam. <laughs> Give them a real fire, they'll get excited, but steam? No. No, it probably looked at you a little funny. Huh? Mm -hmm. All right, let's go from steam to the chat room. How was that for a segue? You like that? That was great. Thank it was you, very smooth. How can we learn to preach messages that are fresh, original, and interesting so that people can hear more than once without turning out in boredom? <laughs> when you, I preached the gospel 3,000 times in the same place, and many times it was to the same people in Cathedral Square in Christchurch, New Zealand, and it is a dilemma, and I try to make it fresh and interesting for those that are regularly there. But it doesn't matter if you repeat something. Uh, repetition is the mother of knowledge. In fact, I used to go through the commandments so many times, I started going through backwards. Start at 10 right through to 1, and then 1 through to 10, and then start in the middle. Um, but for my own, it was for my own sake, just because I felt like a, a parrot. But yeah, if they hear things again and again, it doesn't matter, because it really needs to sink in. We're talking about eternity. Yeah, I think one of the problems with the <coughs> modern church, particularly in America today, is they're more concerned with being fresh, original, and interesting than they are about being uh, biblical. Yeah. And uh, it's the gospel that's the power of God to salvation, not your originality and sharing the gospel, not your freshness, not your uh, anecdotes, not your stories, but the gospel. And uh, I don't think you could ever preach the gospel too many times to anybody. Yeah. What do you think, Trish? 
Yeah, I think that I, th I think that um, we've got to be careful ourselves to not get bored. That that's the I think that's really the question is we've got to we've got to guard our hearts. To, we think that maybe because we've heard it so many times we can get hardened maybe to to the message, but you just never know who it's hit, it's going to hit. So we just continue to keep preaching it faithfully. It's it's the word that's going to save them. It's it's not our cleverness. <coughs> it's not the way we look or the outfit that we wear, or else we would change our outfits a million times. You know. And I never <laughs> change mine. <laughs> yeah, so I would have noticed people. that you no, keep the same I'll outfit. Wear the same thing every time open or preach. It's very sweet. Ooh. It could be why I'm not drawing too many crowds. <laughs> yeah. All right, from Anthony Merkel, uh, Academy grad. He and his wife, Natalie, have both been through the Academy. Uh, I purchased today, and this is kind of timely, and we do have, uh, I think, just about enough time. I purchased today one of the lie detector kits uh, for my church. We have an outreach coming up on the 23rd, <laughs> which would be church. tomorrow. Sounds like the church is telling lies. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We're going to devote I'm the sixth grade classroom today to <laughs> polygraph tests for everybody in the church. Uh, but he has an event tomorrow, and looking forward to adding the uh, lie detector to uh, their tools uh, for evangelism. Evangelism. I was wondering if you could show us how to effectively uh, use this and give some ideas how to start conversations. <coughs> well, uh, some time ago, we uh, uh, Chad and I went out and to uh, Cal State oh, Northridge. That's right. You used and, it. Uh, we used it <coughs> uh, on a couple of uh, high school students who were touring the campus with a very nervous high school teacher. Take a look. We don't know where we're going. <laughs> Why is it? No, he's not. Take the lie detector. Whoa, wait. How do I do this? So do, you, do you consider yourself to be a good person? <laughs> yes. Then simply answer the question. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> what? That is cool. How'd you do that? Wait, 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 wait. I thought you were a good person. I am. One more time. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, you're cheating. <laughs> yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so you really consider yourself to be a good person? Yes. Can I ask you a few questions to see if that's true? Okay. Is it okay if I do it on tape since we've that's already fine. embarrassed you? That's fine. I'm Tony. <laughs> How you doing? And John. John, I'll take this back. Don't you walk away with that, John. Okay. All right, John, what's your definition of a good person? I'm sorry for interrupting. Isn't no it? problem. Okay. I'm actually just waiting for one of my other oh, students. So okay. You guys go right ahead. And so what would be your definition of a good person? Um, a nice person who's kind, stuff like that. Yeah. Doesn't doesn't really, well, doesn't have to do stuff bad, but I don't know, just like a blend of both good and bad. Sort of. Okay. Do you, do you have any kind of spiritual background, religious background at all? No. Not at all? Never been to church, anything like no. that? No. Okay. Are, are you familiar with the Ten Commandments? Have you ever heard of those? Yeah. Can you name a couple of them? Nope. No. Okay. <laughs> Very good. All right. Well, John, it would be wrong for me to just be arbitrary and say, I don't think you're a good person. Uh -huh. I'd be kind of judgmental. Even though I'm holding the weapon right now, it would still be wrong. <laughs> it would still be wrong, right? Okay. And if I let you judge yourself, well, you're going to pass every time, right? All right? I guess. So let's look at some of those commandments, see how you do. Okay? One of them is that you shouldn't lie. Have you ever told a lie? Uh, yes. Oh. Oh, whoa. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Someone must have told a big lie. That was you. <laughs> so if we tell lies, by definition, what does that make us? If I lied to you, what would you call me? Well, I think call you a liar. Okay. Have you ever stolen anything before? No, that I don't have to. Uh, I don't know if I can believe you, John. You just admitted <laughs> to being a liar. <laughs> Even if it's small, answer on a test, pack a gum, download music and not pay for it. Oh, the music one. Oh, yes. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if we steal things, what does that make us? A stealer? No, they're a team in Pittsburgh. Oh. Uh, a stealer with an A. A thief. A thief. A thief, yeah. yeah. Uh, let's see, one is that, uh, under the lady's yeah, presence. Yeah, putting so the labels on is uh, the, not quite right either. The labels? Labels. Steal, well, a, a if thief, I, if I If I stole your purse, or I stole your backpack, and I ran down the courtyard here, what would you yell? Someone stole my purse. <laughs> would you say, stop human? Would you say, stop not so nice person? I, I would you say, stop, stop thief. There you right. go. Then okay. you're going to label me if I steal from you, right? For that moment, yeah. yes, okay. If, okay. You're right. All right. right. Okay, guys, um, I think we gotta go, though. All of you have to go? Yeah. yeah. So we just wrap up two minutes. Oh, you're high school No, students. not two minutes. Like One minute. Because this is making seconds. you nervous, huh? No, because we have the bus waiting for oh. us. There's the other two kids. That uh, have where, where are the other two kids? I don't know. 30 seconds. <laughs> okay. 30 all right. seconds. Let's do this. So you've lied and you've stolen. Yes. All right, those are two of God's commandments. Okay. If you were to die today and stand before God, would he find you innocent or guilty of breaking those commandments? He would find me guilty. If he found you guilty, if he's a good judge, what should he do, heaven or hell? Um, I don't know, it'd be up to him. Yeah, it would be. If he is a good judge, what should he do with the lawbreaker? I guess punish him. Heaven or hell? Would be a hell, I guess. Yeah. Does that concern you at all? Nope. Why? Because I don't really believe in this. Does it matter what you believe? Or mm -hmm. whether or not what you believe is true? Mm, what if I believe is true? Exactly. If you were standing in a courtroom before a judge, and the judge found you guilty, and you said, Well, Your Honor, I don't believe you're a judge. I don't believe I'm guilty. I don't believe I'm going to jail, so I'm going home. Do you ever leave the courtroom? 
No, they wouldn't let me. No, it doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is whether or not what you believe is true, right? Right. Okay. The truth is, we're all going to stand before God, give an account for our life. We're not going to be able to pass his lie detector test either. Right. And if he finds us guilty because he's good, he's going to punish our sin, and that punishment's eternity in hell. Right. Any idea what the good news is, though? Because that's all bad news. Because the good news is, as long as I don't you know. believe, you can go to heaven. Nope, that's not the good news. You are, if you are saved, you can <laughs> Good news you is are. this. The good news is this, John. <laughs> okay, come on, guys. Good, good news up, is this. John, finish up. Go, keep and, going. Uh, Let's go. Finish up, John. The we'll good, walk with you. Good okay. news is this, John. What? 2,000 years ago, God the Father sent His Son to earth in the right. person of Jesus Christ. Right. Fully God, fully man, without sin. Unlike you, me, your counselor, everyone else, He never once violated God's law. Right? About 30 to 33 years in that earthly existence, He voluntarily went to the cross. He suffered and died a horrible, bloody death He did not deserve right. to take upon Himself the punishment we rightly deserve for our sins against God. Right. Three days later, He rose from the grave, forever defeating sin and death. Right. Whether you believe it or not, whether you like it or not, what God requires of you is the same thing He requires of me. And that's how we repent, that we turn from our sin and put our faith and our trust in Jesus Christ alone to save us. Right. You're how old? 16. 16. 10 out of 10 people die. Do you know when you're going to die? Nope. No? Me neither. Time to get right with God is now why he's giving you the opportunity. Right. Give it some thought, at least. All right. Have, Have a good day. day, John. All right. Don't be worried. Thanks for your time. Sure. Tony, I love your stubbornness. It's so because of all the things we should be stubborn about, it's the gospel. And right. that lady was trying to stop you, they're trying to yeah. trying to pull you away. And she was not a happy and, and lady. I, I think it somewhere Very says says something in scripture about Jesus said his face is a flint toward Jerusalem. If you strike a flint, what do you get? Sparks. Yeah, sparks. And and that's if someone tries to deter us from telling someone about everlasting life when they're gonna die and go to hell without God's mercy, we need to just be stubborn and say, I'm gonna stay with this thing. And, and I, I think that's part of where my law enforcement training came in handy. Oh yeah. I was used to pursuing people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and so when he wanted to leave <laughs> I'm following before, you. before my detention was over, uh -huh. I'm in pursuit. That's right. You're that's just simple. gonna do a pit maneuver on him. <laughs> <laughs> now let's not stop that again. Uh -huh. yeah. All right. Hey, we're about out of time. We want to thank you for joining us uh, today and this week, as always. Is Trish going to wave? Is Trish going to wave? She well, should yeah. say goodbye. Oh, thanks, you guys. Thank uh, you yeah, so yeah. much for having me on. What a blessing. Well, thank we need you. you to, we need you out here Monday through Friday, Trish, so work that oh, out with Emilio. You're going to yeah. have to. How about this? Um, I will do the praying and you do the fasting. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll negotiate. That, <laughs> we'll negotiate. That's a reference to fast food, and we think we should eat healthy. <laughs> that's okay. right. All right. Hey, uh, don't forget, join us at uh, Transformed in Oceanside this weekend. Go to livingwaters.com for more information. Keep your questions coming at onthebox at livingwaters.com. Go to the block at onthebox.us. And until Monday, be encouraged, strengthened, and unafraid. <laughs> <Please>. <laughs> Proclaim the gospel. <laughs> now do it! You're full of it! Living Waters presents On the Box.